Happy Tuesday, guys! Welcome back to the best podcast in the whole entire world with me, Jessica. And me, Zoe Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you had a wonderful week and you love last week's episode. We hope you're all rich in your little piggy banks. A lot of people are saying they feel inspired to be better with their money now, and I agree. Same, we need to have our meeting with her, don't we? We do. Organise our little pension pots and our We're not wheel. letting that, that slip because we need to sort that out. Definitely. Did you speak to your mum? No, but I will. She, she must have not listened yet because she likes to text me one thing a week that we've said that the grammar's wrong or that we've got the wrong word or, you know, she likes she to text us. day with me. Yeah, I get one a week at least. Um, she also said that we don't look at the cameras enough. And what I had to remind her of was it's not a theatre performance. Like, we are speaking to each other. Yeah. I think you're quite good at looking at the camera, but I'm speaking to you. I know, but I think we need to remember that we've done three seasons where it was just a mic. So it's quite difficult to look. And also, a lot of people still listen. So your mum's clearly watching on YouTube, right? Watching and writing down notes. Ridiculous, actually. But she does need to get a will, so I, I will be telling her that. Get so a will. I, I get all, to the camera and tell I her. get all the cash money, mum. All the dollar bills. Oh, yeah. We've had a studio upgrade, guys. We are the favourites. We're in what I would say is the more like serious professional room. We had a clapperboard at the at the start just there. Murray did it. And uh, we're in a bigger, darker room, which is more soundproof. It's a larger set. We've got a brighter floor. We've changed a few pictures around. We've got some fresh flowers. Can you see them if you're looking on YouTube? And it's looking more professional. So we're going to switch it up. So if anybody has any gorgeous things they want to add to our set, feel free to send us them because we'd love them, you know? Are you a wee freebie? A wee freebie. Love a freebie. I don't know if I can touch you anymore. Oink. <laughs> <laughs> so. We've got a spatter swallow, which is a, bev a beverage this week. I've seen this all over Instagram this week. Right, so I got this from a client, Modern Love Store, right? She said you better try them on the podcast, so here we are. Anyway, what we were chatting about when I was with her was, this is quite a good drink for, you know... A lot of people don't drink anymore. Yeah. But you don't want to just, you know, if you're in a Saturday night making a nice dinner. But you still want something refreshing and... You're not drinking, but you don't just want a Coke Zero because you drink that all the time. Quite a good option, these. So they're called Living Things. And it's a gut-friendly, low-sugar prebiotic soda. Oh. You'll be into these. Oh. Low-calorie, high-fibre. Don't know what else that says. Anyway, one's raspberry and pomegranate. Pomegranate, right. Mm -hmm. And one's peach and blood orange. What one would you like to try? Ooh, blood orange. Right. I love blood orange stuff. You try that and I'll try the raspberry one. Speaking of blood orange, has anyone read the book, Blood Orange? Because that was one of the best thrillers I've read. Zoe, I'll need to send you, give you that book after. How's your book going? You started it yet? Ask me next week. Cheers. All right. All right. All right. Living Things. This is actually gorgeous um, branding. Is it a Glaswegian? Think? No, I don't think so. Do you know what I, I like when I can is that um, matte textured way? That was London. Boo. It's alright. I was just holding it to the camera there. I think this one's quite nice. I mean, it's very refreshing. That, that with some ice would be gorgeous. With a straw. Do you want the swapsies? Do you know what it's quite like diluting juice, but it might, like, it's maybe a wee bit diluted. It's Do you know like what I mean? Two billion live cultures. That's what I was going to say, but I didn't know what that meant. It's just the things that go into your gut. All right. So the Good bacteria. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's high. That is very high, actually. Yeah, they're all right. I prefer that one. I prefer yeah, the raspberry I and pomegranate. Yeah, I prefer this one. This one's a bit too, is the word bitter? Mm-hmm. I struggle to piece words with flavours. What do you mean? So if you're describing something. If I was describing a flavour. Yeah, like I'm not sure if it's like bitter or not. Or like I know when something's sweet or sour, say. Mm -hmm. But like bitter or see if there was a flavour in something like specifically that I didn't like. You can't pick out what it actually is. Yeah, like say it was a lot of herbs, right? Herbs. <laughs> I don't really know what one's what. Okay. Apart from coriander, because I hate that. Mm. Is that an herb? 
That's an herb, yep. Um, but anyway, yeah, I was just thinking of that there because I wasn't sure whether to call that bitter or not. Parsley repeats on me bad. That There's one in like mixed Italian herbs that I don't like and it's quite strong. Could be tarragon. Oh no, it's tarragon in Italian herbs. That's really strong. There's one that's just too potent for me. Maybe kind of ruins or, the vibe. Oregano. I think I need to have them individually. It's definitely not basil because I have that on its own. <laughs> what do <laughs> Americans call coriander? Oh, no, is it a pepper? Aragola or something? What, what is coriander? They don't call it coriander. Can't remember. Corny. Corny. Anyway. Corny. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely swallow that, but it's not. I'm swallowing the raspberry and spitting the peach and orange. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. But I've been too busy down in bloody orange LucasAids and Coke Zeros because of the hangover we've had. So we can talk about why that happened. <laughs> yeah, so we had our boozy brunch at the weekend, everyone. Quite a number of people have told me that I wasn't sober. She was not. But none of us were, so it was fine. I know, like, I feel like I'm getting quite, quite pinpointed as a drunk one, and I think that's unfair, an unfair allegation. No, I don't think you I don't think you were the drunk one. At the stage of the event, you were definitely the drunker one. Afterwards? Out of us two or out of the whole... Oh, out of us two. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not in the event, not in the brunch. Hell no. Thank God. But I that. think by the end of it, I took the crown. <laughs> For I think everybody in Glasgow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the whole nation. Fuck me. <laughs> I just think, look, we hugged every person that walked through that door, right? Which was a, a tough, tricky start for you. Yeah, which is really kind of us to do. However, a few people actually said themselves, are you finding this quite tough? I'm not going to lie about it. Yeah, it was. But only, do you know what it is? It's more because not everyone's a hugger. No, they're not. And also, I think when we started hugging a few people at the start... We kind of set the tone. It was like, we can't now not hug everyone else. Obviously, we wanted to, but it was a, do you want to hug us? I'm not sure. There was a few that, like, sneakily were like... Scurried away. Yeah. Yeah. I but, thought, good on you. No, nine times out of ten, it was a beautiful hug with everyone, and everyone was so lovely. I was just quite, like... Conscious of getting like makeup and stuff on people's yes. clothes. Like, see, when I'm in a night out, I'm quite like, Ugh. yeah. Especially when someone's wearing a light color, because we were. I had foundation on us, on my you? shoulder. Yeah, you brush not from off. all the hugs. But I feel like that was a nice start. But that's when it was like the interactions were high, so I needed a few prosecco. We to didn't get, get a drink that. until about half twelve. Do you remember? Because when we were stood there, we were like, we really we were both needed a drink. And and welcoming. We, we didn't want to take the cocktail and arrival because we didn't think there was enough for us so mm. we just left it we were the last to eat as well true so we'd had i think by that point there was a bit of drinking before any eating yeah and then the shots of tequila started going around it was honestly guys just brilliant but i think the first couple of hours for me was a bit of a blur because i wanted to make sure that everyone was settled and understood the how the day was going to go the running order yeah and we went around and gave everybody a little card and they had to write a question or a bit of an embarrassing story or was it an embarrassing or funny story? Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, there was 140 people there. I didn't think that everybody would give us a card back, but they pretty much did. And we and have a pile like that of embarrassing stories that we cannot wait to share with you because we could only share a few, couldn't we? On the actual night. Yeah, because we wanted... On the day, The main sorry. thing was having like the singer and all that going. Yeah. And the party started. Let's talk about them. They were amazing. So we had Alicia from Lux Grooves DJing. Um, and if you live in Glasgow, you might have seen Alicia at quite a few ev events because she's probably one of the only female DJs that are kind of at these things, isn't she? Yeah, she's really good. She's amazing. Um, she brings vibes. And then we had Natalie James doing the singing. Yeah, she was She's great. also on like Lux Grooves books. I think that's kind of like a wee musical agency thing. Um, and she was really good. She was a party starter, weren't she? She had a sequin jacket on and she just had she such just good was energy. Like, I like the perfect person to be like, come on, get up and dance. Like a little pocket rocket, weren't she? Yeah, like dance, like strutting around, trainers and that on. Yeah. Loved it. I was jealous. Though. So she did two 30 minute sets. We Everybody had a brunch, settled in for that, got to know each other. Because what I didn't realise until maybe like half an hour into it when I was going around speaking to everyone, that there was tables and booths of 
people that weren't there together because everyone was in a table of either six, eight, some of them were like 12. Yeah. And they were mingled in parties of like twos, threes. And by the end of it, everyone made friends. So nice. I like that. Because I would almost expect that to happen if I went to an event like that, especially if there's only a couple of us. Yeah. You don't really do a lot of like tables of two at these sort of like party style events when you think about it. Yeah. So I like that and everyone seemed to go on. Yeah, and really well. And dance with people dancing on the seats and everything. We had one guy come, apart from Richard, he turned up for an hour just for some food. And then there was one guy and he was great vibe. So we obviously had to pick him out of the crowd like we did at the Christmas live shows. As soon as they came in, his pal said, well, he was the only guy that here. And I said, probably. And I was like, we'll talk to you later. But I actually think he got let off lightly. He did. I bought him a shot. Next time. And I just think... People dancing on the tables, chairs. I know, and they were getting... off a little bit. Yeah, they were getting in trouble and I was just like, fuck it, go back yeah, up. Go back. Nothing's going to happen. But Natalie passed us the mic and you were singing Mamma Mia. Do you remember that? Well, what I'll say is you've brought it back to my memory. <laughs> you got the mic and you were like, yes! And the whole I crowd was singing quite well. I didn't want to give it back. No, you didn't. Do you know what I will say though? Like I'm quite passionate about singing, but see when I take the mic on that sort of thing or in karaoke, the pressure of singing to a certain volume gets me out of breath and I don't perform as well. <laughs> it's perhaps when I'm in the shower or the car. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I get quite breathless, whereas I think I just need to calm down and just shut And just ball. live in the moment of it. Yeah. Well, it was honestly brilliant, guys. And Murray... We saw was there filming everyone. Murray, say hi. Hello, everyone. Yeah, you got, we gave him a mic. Thank Why are you calling him a wee soul? Well, because he was there. And let me finish my sentence. We got the video back at six o'clock that evening of the event. We were in Kitty O'Shea's because the rugby was on and our phones pinged and the video was already edited of the full day. You just can't beat that service. You cannot. We love you, Murray. So, and everyone else loved him. I gave Murray a hug when he was leaving. Same. I was very, <coughs> I was very surprised I got a hug from Zoe. <laughs> I actually remember at the time thinking he's probably like, fucking hell, it's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> so, Murray was there and it was just fantastic. And we've got um, Alan and Graham. Well, we're in separate rooms now. We were in separate rooms before in the other studio, but now we've come really far. But I think they've got a mic. Alan, say hi. Hello. <laughs> so you're not getting away from now. It's cemented love. Thank you guys. <laughs> well, thanks everyone who joined us for the brunch. Murray, what were your thoughts on the brunch actually? Uh, I've never been in a room where I was able to disappoint 150, 140 women at the same time. So <laughs> why would you disappoint them? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> oh, you're perfect in every way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was great fun and we're definitely going to continue doing it because we've realised that we are really good Eventful. event planners. I agree. I feel like when we originally were going to do the brunch, it wasn't going to be as, not as fun as that, but we wanted more. We wanted the goodie bags. We wanted DJs and singers. Yeah, because we felt like, although we did bring the entertainment in the Christmas show, we had the mic the whole night singing. Mm. We wanted to just maybe calm your ear holes for the next event and leave it to the professionals. Yeah, for sure. So we feel like we want to continue doing more. So tell us what you want from us, really. We, we've we got loads of ideas. We obviously want to try and meet as many of you as possible, but we just, we need it to be fun and we still want it to be intimate. Interactive. Yeah, and I think so many of you commented afterwards, like, oh, we really wish we got tickets and... But also just a big thanks to the brands that helped yeah. out because we gave really cute wee goodie bags which took us um, 10 hours to build and pack. That so we had, so long, guys. And it was actually a tragic experience. We ha we were still tying the ribbons on them at 5 to 12 and it started at 12, just to let you know. Um, so we anyway, we were, had, well. Yeah, we were. Um, and my mum's getting all stressed out, wasn't she? So we had mini Empire Biscuits, of course, from Plant Blonde. They were amazing. We te raspberry uh, taste test. People one. were so happy when they opened the goodie bag and they were like, Plant Blonde Empire. I'm like, oh yeah, it's like it's like the Gucci of Empire, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's all like cutely wrapped and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And By the way, we, we had... wrapped them. We stick at them. Yeah, that was another thing. We wrapped 140 Empire biscuits. Um and then we had little mini ILP El Paradise waters, green waters, because we love that. Which by the way, that was decent. It's not like I'm not talking like a mini, we're talking a hundred mil. Hundred mil. 
water which will last you ages and perfect when you go traveling because that's the t the size i take when i go away it is a perfect wee bottle actually, yeah it's cute wee thing and then we had um a lot in your plate plate stickers can you see on the camera Sorry. which by the way i don't have a single one of them can you believe it i know well we had more than this we had pod pig but a little picante we had fair fox <laughs> we had a lot in your a a -L -O -Y -P and our smileys so if you have a laptop an iphone case if you're rich bitch enough to have a ramoa suitcase or just a normal suitcase stick it on tag us please and show us because we want to see us to the world however there was a few messages the next day saying uh i feel like my goodie bag's lying all over wonder bar floor or <laughs> i've left it somewhere and i'm like jesus christ no, what a wee waste so, but anyway really good to be goodie bags yeah, oh no there was a voucher in it as well for two for one burgers at August House or two for one pizza at Nona said. Class. I think that's class, by the way. It is class. Well done, us. Well done, us. And we, and we individually handwritten the labels on your goodie bag. It's all like a one to one personal experience from us. You see? Love, Jess, and Zoe. Kiss. And we put the We Love Heart sticker on oh, it as so well. We did. <laughs> we went everywhere to find these stickers. This is the thing, right? I used to work in events. So I can, I can't see past those things. Yeah, there's the like see the things that other people notice. I don't care if they don't notice it. I like to know that we've done it. Do you know what I mean? I do feel like people do notice. People do notice the finer details. Mm -hmm. Maybe not all the time, but there will be some people that be like, "That's a nice wee touch." Yeah, for sure. But I think it's important. Yeah, and we enjoy that part of it. Yeah, it's quite stressful, and like we've got other things to think about. But that is part of the fun for me. And we named three cocktails. We had a tequila cocktail called the Piggy Paloma. We had Paddy's Punch, I believe. Paddy's Punch, which was Jameson whiskey. And the third one was Disco Spritz. Disco Spritz. Did anyone have any of them? I didn't. All I, I saw was Prosecco and Tequila Rose. I saw the one with the grapefruit, which was the... Well, that was a welcome drink, the what? Paloma. Was that the Piggy Paloma? Yeah, but I did also see a couple of espresso martinis kicking about. Loads of people were drinking them. That's when you're absolutely out for a day out, by the way. Because the heart's going. Yeah. You're drunk. There's some people there for their birthdays. Um, what was the table in the corner in the back room? The circle table. Because remember when we were doing it, we were like, oh, we really wish we could sit on that, that table. table. They were great fun. Well, do you know what? Everyone was great fun, but they, they were steaming. <laughs> Because so you're in a fun. good location, like see, even in the corner, like you're kind of packed away, but in like, quite a good way. And you can, you can just do what you want, but they could look out and see everything. Yeah. The food was nice. Honestly, can't recommend it enough. It was hosted in Ghost, if anyone doesn't know where it, that is, which is a great restaurant. We've spoke about that a few times before. So it was lovely. Can't fault it. Can't wait for another one. When's perfect, next? Perfect, perfect, perfect. When is next is the question. That's not um, to tease anyone. I don't fucking know either. But we'll work it out. I really want to do another, we want, We really want to do like another big, huge, bongo-y, bingo -y style Christmas event, don't we? Mm. Let's make that happen. And then what else have we been up to? So the next day, I don't know why we we plan, made plans for the next day. Guys, I didn't get out of my bed until half past three in the afternoon and I haven't done that for a, four years, I think. Mm. And I was in bed at one. I mean, it's not the latest. It's not the worst. But considering... I think that's tragic. Do you? No, I don't actually. But that is, that is late to from, me now. But when you're out from 12 in the afternoon, yes, that is late. Bearing in mind, my dad picked us up at half eight in the morning to take us to Ghost. Oh, my For God. nine. So we were out from that time. Yeah, not drinking until 12. And I also didn't eat that much because when you're at these things, you just don't eat. It's not your priority, is it? You're not there for the, the food. So... Yeah, I, me and a few friends stayed out a bit longer and ended up the night in Blue Lagoon Chippy, had a pizza crunch for the first time. I actually didn't like it, guys. I thought it was minging. That's a shame for me because I was looking forward to that. I think we're going to need to try it again. Yeah, like a fresh one, fresh out the fryer because it was a bit soggy in the middle. Was that, was that sitting in the, the back, yeah, do you think? because I thought it was a fritter. Right, So okay. if anyone doesn't know what a fritter is, because, by the way, they're, again, a Scottish thing, but it's just a potato... Would you say like a like a round slice? I would, yeah, I would say like a slice of potato with batter on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. But it's like round, and they're so good, aren't they? That's in good vinegar. on a roll with some candy sauce on it. Oh, are we rolling fritter? 
I also went to the chippy when I left about 10 ish. I had to leave because I was so hungry. Like, I, I couldn't function anymore because I was so hungry. I had a headache and I was about to fall asleep. Um, and I got, which is disgusting actually, in reflection, I got a sausage supper. So the battered sausage. So a sausage supper, for anyone again that doesn't know what that is, is basically just like a meal. So it's like, and you get two battered sausages here in Scotland, not one. So it's pretty hefty. What was the need for the two sausages? As soon as I opened it, I was like, why is there two? It's always two. I don't know why that's a thing. Because battered sausages are big and... And you get the chips. Yeah. And I think that's why you don't say supper. You would just ask for one with chips. What, anyway, you, what do you mean? Like, I think the supper makes it... A meal? Two with chips. Oh. I think I think that's what it is. If you just said sausage and chips. Yeah, I think so. Because I've said this on my Instagram before. If I say sausage and chips in England, I would get an unbattered sausage with chips. I would have to ask for a battered sausage. And can you get that there? Yeah. So the battered thing is still a thing, but it's just not automatically well, yeah, of course. that. But you don't get battered Mars bars or battered pizzas or battered potato. Right, okay. A apart from obviously, well, a chip's not battered, is it? It's just deep fried, but yeah. Interesting. Anyway, I got that with... Um, so I'd ordered that and then I saw on the board that it had chips, cheese and curry sauce and I just thought, oh, I could really go that. So then I just thought, I'll just get chip, I'll just get cheese and curry sauce on my sausage supper. <laughs> Which, I'll be honest, I had the full sausage and then I didn't eat any more of it. Because I was done in. But so you just point, had one sausage and that was it? The odd chip probably, but didn't eat very much. Because, you know, that way as soon as I had the dirtiness in my mouth, I realised how minging it actually was. But I was just so desperate for like the worst did you go to the thing. chippy that was near George Square or did you go to the one that's near train station? George Square. Yeah, same. That's kind of where you always end up after night out these days, isn't it? And also, guys, how random is this? But at one, half one in the morning when I was absolutely, what's the word that you got called in Nottingham? <laughs> <laughs> Obliterated. Obliterated, yeah, something like that. When I, that was me. I'm at the chippy queue. Pointing my big fucking fingers, like, I want that. And then I turn around, and there's I'm like, oh yeah, I know you. And there was a 25 man stag do from Leicester in the chippy. I can't go over that. I haven't seen them for years, and I was like, oh fucking hell. Message me the next day, like, are you all right? I'm like, no, nor are you, no. So are they actually just up here because Glasgow's a good place to be? They were here for, on, a, on his stag do, and I was oh, like, that. that's brilliant. Because I do genuinely think. A lot of them would go to Edinburgh, I'd say. Mm. Why? I do not know. I'm not slagging Edinburgh, but I genuinely I do think... <laughs> I, I mean, I genuinely don't think Edinburgh is that good on a night out. Where the fuck do you go? I have no idea, and I think that's even more studenty. Yeah. Than Glasgow, potentially. Nice bars, but even then. Tiger Lily, Le, is it Le Monde? And then you've got the uh, the one that we do actually love, that we went to with Rich and that. Where they do the the drag show. Bru Bohemia. Bohemia. That's Sorry, great fun. I, I, nothing was coming to me there. Bohemia is great fun. But Glasgow, I genuinely think, has got far more live music venues or I also pubs. think it's because everything's a bit closer as well. Yeah. So it's more like you go into the city centre and you're, you're there. Everything's yeah. around you. But Edinburgh's a bit... You've also got, I suppose, in Edinburgh, you've got the Three Sisters and the Grass Market for, like, lads, lads, lads type vibe. I'm thinking stag do here. Mm. But a friend of mine, actually, from Leicester, messaged me the other day, Emily, and she was like, hi, I'm, I'm like, planning a I'm planning a trip for my friend Tendo, and where can I go? There's, like, 20 of us in Edinburgh, and I'm like, fucking hell. But you Yeah, that's what I said. Don't know. Yeah. But anyway... Anyway, we digressed. We digressed. We went to we went out for a roast on Sunday. Yes. To the Which, in hindsight, like you say, we planned it because we thought it would be a good idea because you do crave that. Pure, yeah. And I guess it was in a way. It's just the thought of getting up and getting there, isn't it? Yeah. It was meant to be at two, but then we changed it to four PM so the boys could come as well. Yeah. We Jason was a little bit hungover from his rave in Manchester, wasn't what, he? Three nights before. <laughs> Jesus. He anyway, to see some house DJ, didn't he, or something? Oh fuck knows, honestly. And Richard uh, was in a extremely know. hyper mood, and I was like, "Can't deal with you today." He was like big day out vibes, and we we're all like, "Deed to the one." We don't want to be here, Rich. Quite a shame, actually. Yeah. Um. So we went to the Duke's Umbrella, which, by the way, I would really recommend because it also had a singer. Yes, from two till five on a Sunday. Two till five, and he was like, 
he was quite edgy vibes. He was. He looked a bit like Noel Gallagher, didn't he? Yeah, like quite kind of old school he singing good very songs. Very much like Noel Gallagher. Yeah, he did. Was it him? <laughs> um, but anyway, I would really, really recommend that for a roast. I think it was good. And I think the highlight for me was the haggis Stuff. Yorkshire pudding. It definitely, it was a great meal uh, deal as well, wasn't it? It was two, a starter and a main for 30, 30 quid or was it less than 30 quid? No, I think it's 30 pound, eh? Um, and I had this, well, me and Jason had this amazing ham hock and lentil soup. I tried that, it was good. Really good with a big bit of sourdough. You and Rich had... Patty. The patty. I've just got a thing for patty when I'm out. I love it as a starter. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? A wee bit of chutney on top. They, I don't know what their side thing was. It was like, I wouldn't say it was chutney because it was smooth. But it was like that sort of colour and that was really good. And that was, on top of it. We Rich was drinking, but we, you had... But well, we all had Pepsi Max, which she was delighted at because there is a Pepsi Max girly. Oh, yeah. Do you know what it is? I forget about it. Mm. I would never, ever, ever buy a can of Pepsi Max or Diet Pepsi or anything for the house. But you prefer it? But I prefer it, I think. I it think that's delicious. maybe why it's a wee treat when you're out, when it's like, oh, we don't have, yeah, as it's sweet. It's much sweet, sweeter than Coke. Yeah. Um, and then for Maine, I had the chicken. I had the beef. Jason had the beef and Richard had the... Venison. Venison. It's a bit of an extra supplement there, though. But mm. it was... Um, he said it was lovely. I had extra gravy. It was like a, it was like a red wine jus. So it was rich. Jus. It was quite a rich... But do you know what was the highlight for me? The roast potatoes were class. Yeah, they were good. They were so good. The only thing that was missing for me, maybe a bit of mash, but I could... I can go over that if the roast potatoes are good enough, but cauliflower cheese. Guys, can you we need just, that? Can we have like a public service announcement to all the roast places in and around Scotland? Please fucking serve cauliflower cheese. I think that's a given for a roast. If I have a roast at the house, I've, there's always cauliflower cheese. Honestly, the best roast dinner that I had in Manchester at Firehouse, they serve it with cauliflower and I think it's leek, cauliflower and leek with like a nice gratin on top. Mm. It is beautiful and it honestly makes it. The haggis stuff Yorkies is a, is a nice treat. That was a, an, an extra side, but it's like it's their sort of special, isn't it? We need that creaminess or something. Even mac and cheese or something just would have been nice. I think there might have been mac and cheese on the was there? not on the side the though. Not sure, but I would really recommend going there for a roast. I would say it's better than a few we've had up here. Yeah, I agree. Um, nice atmosphere. I think the Pub place vibes. is nice. Yeah, like to look at. It's quite. I know we're not lovers of dark rooms as much, but on a Sunday, cosy, cosy, it was roast vibes, nice. Because it was Paddy's day. It was packed. Yep, singer. Um, packed. And then when we were leaving, we saw um, the boys from Open Goal Podcasts. They were in there having their roast uh, and they were saying how well done to us. And we need to get them on this podcast. Or we need it's to go on It's dynamic, theirs. isn't it? Yeah. I think we need to get someone on like that and it's like... We ask all the questions that, you know, when you're seeing someone quite early stages and stuff and you're like, if a guy was to text you this or whatever, what, what does that just, actually yeah. mean? Because we should get, well, Cy Ferry, who is like the main guy of the pod, he is a massive foodie. So every time we see one another, we're always talking about food. So it'd be quite good to get him on to discuss all the foodie places. Mm. And then we could ask, um, it's Andy Slaney. What's the other guy called? Is it Kevin? Kev? I'm not sure. Do you know, Murray? No. and then Kevin Kyle yeah so those four and is that is that right have I said that right I don't think so I think so um, we should get them on and like you say get their men, a man's point of view yeah because I do think as a woman you have reason you have like you justify everything whether it's bad or good yeah. into like something else and it's probably a little shame yeah and then we can just rip the piss out of our complete lack of knowledge of football. Well, mine. I'm quite an expert. <laughs> went to a game once. Um, then we went to Loop and Scoop for sh some dessert. I forgot about that. I don't know if I've ever just been in there for a wee ice cream. I may be having like a sunny day if I'm out and about in the West End, but I've never done... Tell you why you need to mention, Zoe. Because we were going to go to Tortellano's near mine because they do really good raspberry ripple, but you went somewhere and I don't think you've spoke about it. And Where you said it was go? worth the hype. You got hot chocolate or something. Oh, fuck okay. Um La Gelat La Gelatasso or something like that. It's called. Let me just double check that because you'll have seen all the all the foodies and like even 
Glasgow influencers and stuff talking about it because it's very. Where is it? Is it south side? It's um, south side Strathbungo, I believe, is the area. All right. Of that street. I'm not sure. It's where that place, the bungo, is. Potluck used to be there. It's like oh, yeah, one sorry, street that. that's got like two. Yeah. Potluck, what a great place that was, by the way. Yeah, it's La Gela Tessa. So basically, Jason and Zoe really wanted to get like a dessert after Duke's Umbrella. And we, we're going to go We're going to go somewhere and have it. We were thinking about Minted in the West End. And you said you were really craving Raspberry Ripple. And Tortellano's in Audington is known for their Raspberry Ripple. But we thought, well, let's just stay out in town. Mm. Thought about that, but it was too far. So we ended up going Loop and Scoop, which is a good, safe option. And I had a Bueno bite-sized churros. And oh, I had a, the Bonoffi, one scoop of Bonoffi. That was well good. I just had raspberry ripple, which was really good. But Jason had um, the Milky Way one. Oh. And I tried a bit of that and that was delicious. Mm. I would never really choose white chocolate that much. Same. But I like it. Yeah. Just a wee, a wee touch of it now and again, you know? Yeah, it is nice. So that's what we did with our Sunday. And then on Monday, it's been bloody non-stop. I went to see Neil. So you did? How was that? Quite shy. Was it? I'll tell you why, because... Basically, we went to see him a couple of years ago in the O2. Wow. That's good. As in in Glasgow. Yeah, it's quite a small venue for him, Academy. no? Yeah, which was great because you you feel like you're right there. Yeah. Like you were standing. I so, feel like he's much bigger than the O2. I know. Well, then obviously he's went to the Hydro. And was it not full? This time. No, it was absolutely packed. A young crowd. And I don't know how they know who Neo is. What? Because he blew up on TikTok or something. That's exactly what Jason said. He must have a TikTok song. But the boys wear gym stuff. Why do why do young boys go to concerts and stuff with gym stuff on now? Shorts and like a gym top, like an Under Armour gym top. Probably wanting to get like sweaty. And then they the have like their, their half set like tied oh, like yeah. around there, like across their body. It's just pathetic in my opinion. Anyway, so we went too early as usual. Richard's the same, isn't he? It's like doors open half six, go over half six. Why is that? Anyway, we waited in the car, right, until about seven. But Mario was a sport, so we were like, when oh. does he come on? To be no fair, way. that is why we went a bit earlier. He sings, you should let me love Yeah, but you. what else does he sing? Um, Nothing. Is it not anymore? Fuck all else. Oh. Well, I'm sure he does, but no one knows anything else. So anyway, we were out getting a, we weren't drinking either, out getting another uh, water top up and he came on, so we missed a start at him, saw that song and then this hype man came on and when I tell you, he was on for an hour and a half before Neil and it was this hype man whilst the DJ was on and the whole time he was saying, we're looking for three girls to get up and dance with Neil, you know how to do all that shit. Oh like yeah, and then it's all over on TikTok the next day. Yep. The whole time... He was doing that. They kept putting the camera to different girls in the crowd. Like, but it was the same ones that were dancing. Like, I'm not joking. They were dancing from the minute I stepped in at the minute I left. They must have been fucking done in. Anyway, and there was this really good one that they kept going. And she was pure, but it was quite TikTok-y dancing, like going for it. She did like, like boobs in that. Why is my toes curling? But also, do you know what? <laughs> I know, we were actually standing up at the back of the stand there against the wall. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then. Um, standing? Standing. I know. I actually went to the box office when I got in and asked was any seats. <laughs> That's when you know. That's when you know you're old. Or you're too high. They say no. They were like, yeah, but you just need to pay for them. And I thought, right, it's no worth that. No. So anyway, um, see every time they put a camera on a girl, they turned round and shook their bum. And I just don't understand why you would do that. <laughs> like just a wee, it's fine. <laughs> Two steps. I mean, I say that, they were all pure doing like <laughs> all that. I was traumatised for them, honestly. Anyway, so this guy was doing this for an hour and a half and I, like our backs were getting sore and I have been standing for so long. And um, Jason's got a bit of cold, so that was coming on, so we just weren't in the... Yeah. We weren't in the spirits for it, we weren't patching it because we waste the money in that. So anyway, then Neil came on, sang a few classics, then went to a few songs that absolutely no one knew. No one was singing along. Oh, really? That's annoying when they do that. they're trying to push the other shit, no one cares. No one cares, yeah. And then sorry, Bridgerton. We heard he came on and sang "So Sick." Is that what that's called? It yeah, it's so sick. Um, and then we thought after that we'll call it a night. So we didn't actually stay until the end. I wonder what he's We've seen it before. Of him. We've seen it before. Well, I seen a few videos and I didn't actually recognise it. But apparently, got the hype man back on because Neil's actually 
written more songs than he sang. That's right, yeah. That are like Rihanna and all that. Yeah. So he did that the last time, but he sang them. So it was Didn't still he good. Write Umbrella by Rihanna. Yeah, I think he so. Wrote quite a few. He did a few of hers and a few other like um, iconic songs. So it's just see when you've seen it before in a more intimate space, it's never the same. Yeah. And I just don't think we were really up for it either. So it's like with a bit of both. Yeah. Of like meh. Nah. So it was fine, but we went to that um, place before. What's it called? An Odd Main Street. Chilos. Is that how you say it? By the way, I went there last week as well. Chilos? Chilos, burger place. Chilos? Chilos, yeah. But well, it's around the corner here from here as well. But um, so it it opened on Huntington Main Street a few months back. Went there, had one of the best burgers and sweet potato fries. Mm -hmm. I shouted all about the sweet potato fries. Anyway, a few days, I think I had like the, I think I had the wrap. The wraps were so good. Went back and had it again. Great. Third time I went, which was probably a good thing because we needed to stop going. I know, I mean, it only opened a few months ago. <laughs> the sweet potato fries were so bad. And I said to Rich, I was like, no, these are shocking. And I've gone and told everyone on Insta, like, these are class, the best trips I've ever had. And then anyway, he went back on his own one time. I was like, I'm not getting them again. And then he said to him, oh, he went, does Jess not want anything today? And he was like, no, uh, she said that you did. she didn't like the sweet potato fries. Fuck and he yeah. went, I have changed the supplier. So anyway... We went there the other day and I said, oh, I'll try it one more time. I'll get a burger instead. And we got one called, I think it's called the Godfather or something that they do. And it mm. is so fucking good, guys. Um, and I said, can I have a side of sweet potato fries? He looked at me and went, but they're not the ones you like. I went, by the way, why Why is that? And he went, they were so expensive. He went, if you keep buying them, I'll just change back to them supply. I was like, well, you fucked it, mate. Well, I get sweet potato fries and I thought they, they were good. good. No, they were good, but when I say they were the best sweet potato fries I think I'd ever had. Mm, I do remember you saying They that. weren't. They were a bit soggier. So then I had the normal fries, but they do this sort of... It's like their own sauce. Yes. Oh, it was good. I can't even describe it. Anyway, really recommend that, guys. And when, which one did you go to? The one in Nottingham? Yeah. It's nice to sit in as well. Uh, we sat at the window and just watched the world go by, Johnny. Yeah. A lot of people look in, though, and I'm like, yeah. mad eating. What, did you have but, a chicken burger? No, we just both had like a, a cheese beef burger. Yeah, really do recommend that. It's, it's really nice. And I would like to try well. like the wraps and stuff as well because they look good. Chicken wrap is class. We also got some nuggets to share. Yeah, they were good. Quite like McDonald's nuggets, mm. I would say. And they do loads I of sauces. It. Anyway, yeah, a little shout out for them because it is actually a very, very good place for a burger. Let me just check what I've got to tell you. It's quite a few things. Okay. We need to go back to the brunch a second for a yep. couple of reasons. Oh, yes. One being we've got a really hilarious story that we must share. It can't just stay to those 140 people. Uh, we can't wait. And we cannot wait to tell you on the next week's episode because next week we are going to be doing our sex episode, Embarrassing Story. It's going to be so good. But also, I don't know what got into me apart from 10 gallons of Prosecco, but I was playing Cupid. Yes! My brothers recently became single. My big brother, Adam. Um, and I would say... <laughs> my, I'd say my big brother, Adam, not my 14-year-old brother, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to clarify that, he's also single if there's any children available. Um, <laughs> anyway, and I thought there's quite a lot of nice women in this room. Like, where do we get was. access to all these people? Like that it's not weird to speak to. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not going up to a stranger. So I did actually do some Cupid actions and I think I might have set him up. Yeah, damn right. With one of the pod pegs. So if you're listening, good luck to you, hen. Good luck to you, hen. Um, if it doesn't work out, we'll just let him date all the pod pigs. I know, but maybe we should do like speed dating, but with only him. <laughs> Because, you know, since we spoke about that episode, quite a few people came up to me as well at the brunch and said, oh, by the way, I heard you talk about setting up that friend of yours. Mm -hmm. uh, please set us up with any eligible nice men. So potentially we just need to get more guys aware. I know a lot of guys are aware of this podcast because so many do say they listen with their missus. Or they hear it. But they have, they're with someone. Yeah, there is exactly. A mm -hmm. So we need more anyone got any hot brothers out there or I know make yourself known yeah or Daz I need to get my mum a man as well I know I'm surrounded by single people it's sad life so many people are single wanting to mingle 
This is the problem. I, I genuinely think we are going through a crisis. People don't want to go on these apps. I think we'd also get into that age, like the sort of stick age of if you're really not 100% in it, people are shacking it off because they're like, I don't want to end up even older knowing that I don't want it forever. But each you know what I mean? imagine people being with someone and they're just sticking with them because they are aware of what's out there. It's wild out there. And they're like, I'm just going to stick with this person because... It's a crazy place, it is. Because I don't want to be single. I'm not saying this from experience, by the way. I'm just saying I know there's people that will stay in an unhappy relationship because they think, fuck that. People just say, oh, that's a thing. That's quite sad. Um, anyway, on a, on a brighter note, read out this story. It must be shared. It's double-sided, can you say? This girl, she'll be so embarrassed listening to this, but you were iconic, honey, so you deserve your time to shine. I outed more. her, by the way, to the whole room. <laughs> it was meant to be anonymous, but I wasn't having it. <laughs> oh. Take it away. One time I was steaming. Woke up thinking I'd peed myself. I told my mum, but there was no evidence of a pee in my room. Day goes on. I'm in the shower, ready for the pub round two. I hear screaming. <laughs> mum and friend are in my room whilst I'm showering. I run upstairs. At the end of my bed is a box with uni work in, clothes and a PLT bag opened with new clothes in it. Mum screams. The dogs were attacking the PLT bag. <laughs> Like, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> so I looked. It was a human shit. <laughs> I had come home and peed and pooed into a fucking PLT bag. <laughs> Mum didn't speak to me for days. P.S. There was no smell in my room. I'd wrapped it up like a loaf of bread. <laughs> this was only last year. No recollection of it. But my shit stewed in my room for 18 hours. Little smiley. <laughs> What a legend, by the way. <gasps> Fucking hell, what actually goes through your brain to think? I think poo. it's the confusion for people when they're yeah. drunk because you've had to... <laughs> you you need to push a poo out, let's be honest here. Unless it's diarrhoea, right? But yeah. that doesn't sound like it was diarrhoea. No, because she, she wrapped it. it up. That's a, a solid poo. And I just think that doesn't just fall out. So you've not been like, oh, fuck, it's about to fall out, Marsh. Like it's, it's a process to get that from inside out. So I just think it's that confusion. I also wonder, you know, if her friend wasn't there or her mum, would she have ever told anyone that story? And also, would she have ever noticed? And maybe she would have sent the partial back. Did I ever tell you about a time I had to poo in a bag? I think I did. No, but I also had to put in a bag, and we've spoken about that in the podcast. Oh, yeah, remember right. my toilet was blown. My oh, was blown yeah, yeah, yeah. We were having to do the toilet in plastic bags for like a oh, yeah. days until it was unblocked. Yeah. When did you put in a bag? <laughs> and how have we not discussed this until now? We did because we obviously spoke about it on the podcast. But when did you put in a when bag? When I first ever, <laughs> I can't even have to say that I'm admitting this. When I first ever started seeing Richard, yeah, because you've never admitted that until this point. So what's changed? I'm aware that other people are pooing in bags so it's allowed. No, I did have, I've told you this story. Were you sober? Yeah, fully. You've never told us this, right? <sighs> Strap in. Guys, it's so bad. So, oh, I really hope that the person who lived in this house is not listening. So, I first started dating Richard and he lived in Nottingham. And, uh, <laughs> I think I did tell him this story actually because he was pissing himself. And, there was, it was like an old style Nottingham house. If anyone knows what they're like, they're beautiful, but they're quite old. Uh, Victorian houses, that's what they are. And it was one of those toilets where you pull the lever mm -hmm. and it was always so dodgy. And it had to go down. It was three floors of this house. It had to go down to the second floor where his person who he was living with and his wife lived. He got up and went to training and I thought, I had the whole day to myself, I was going to go to the gym and wait for him to come back. But I was desperate for a shit. I was desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Turtle head. Yeah. But I knew how dodgy this toilet was. And I thought, I actually don't know how I can do it. And then Richard said to me, by the way, don't go down. To, don't, don't don't use the toilet. Um, it's actually broken. The levers stopped working. Right. So the only other toilet I could use was the one on the ground floor where the man that owned the house with his wife was having breakfast. So it's in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't bring myself to do it because I knew it was going to be a big poo. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you feel like the rambling and all that? And Richard was in a loft conversion at the time. So he was on the top, top floor. And uh, yeah, I just got a bag and squatted it in his bedroom floor and pooed in this bag. And it was the biggest poo I've ever done in my life. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, obviously when you first date someone, you just don't want to go to the toilet at all. You so it must even, have been like a, want to pee. a couple of days. <laughs> and I tied the bag up. I need to understand, this is quite a lot of information, but I need to understand, did you go and get toilet roll from the toilet and still wipe your bum? I think I had face wipes in my bag. Right, okay. So I tied this up in this bag and left it in this bag for a good half an hour whilst I got ready because I didn't know what else to do and then walked to the gym and as I got this bag I carried it out like see you later a bag of shit in my hand and I popped it in the neighbour's fucking bin outside the house look do you know what it is a comfort and thought we've all been there I had to we've do it we've all done things toilet stories I would have used the toilet if it wasn't blocked but what would have been worse me pooing in a bag and, it get and no one ever knew about it until eight years later when I actually finally didn't scare him off or I blocked the toilet and everyone's in the and house and it's left there I know and it was a big one as well you know how I've spoke about my Malteser poos before mm. quite often I flush the toilet and like one of them just stays have you ever had that before <laughs> You Malteser. Like a little rabbit dropping, just doesn't want to go down. Yeah, and it only happens when I'm at, in my own house because the, maybe, I don't know, I think I must check everywhere else. But Jason quite often is like, Zoe, you've done that again. I'm like, it's just a t just flush it away, it's just a wee Malteser. Yeah. But it does stay sometimes. <laughs> Look, everyone poos. Just imagine Graham and Alan in there. Like... <laughs> everyone Sorry, poos. Boy. It's a human pro. And if you don't, you're no well. It's literally just, yeah, we have to shit. But anyway, that was the poo story. So hopefully by us reading that out on the podcast that you feel less bad um, about yourself, honey. Yeah. And I mean, there's worse things that could happen, I think. For sure. Oh, you, would rather, you would rather poo in a bag and, bag and poo yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there was I a few in that pile of uh, confessions of a few people oh, shitting there? themselves. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to do the famous sex story episode three will that be of that next week so we're saving some of those stories for that because there's really good ones yeah. and then all of you lovely lot need to write in and let us know um why was we just uh touching on embarrassing stories has anyone seen that video that's going viral at the moment of the zoom call the live stream funeral and that woman is actually in the shower shaving her pubes to hundreds of people live streaming at a funeral while the coffin is literally being walked. <gasps> I just, you need to put me in that coffin with the, the person. Oh, same. I'd be off. Honestly, I just cannot. I cannot. I just think I'm so confused how anyone can come back from embarrassment like that. No. Like, I couldn't show my face in this world again. I could never. So, we're going to... Move on to the bonus and talk about a few things that we've been buying recently. Yeah, a random few, purchases. A few random purchases we've asked you guys as well, so you've gave us a few. But definitely think get your thinking caps on for for next week's ep. Yeah, please send us them in. You're going to have one day to do it all. So listen to this podcast on the Tuesday and you've send it us tonight. that night. Please, 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 we beg because... Honestly, just by us being in that room of all those girls, that was only 140. There's thousands of you that listen to this podcast every week. Please send us in, DM us. It keeps us young. If you want to send it anonymous, just let us know and we can, I don't know, we'll set something up like an anonymous thing, but we would never obviously disclose who you are. Um, apart from if you come to a brunch without <laughs> you. I know, sorry about <laughs> that. So yeah, please do. Um, and also, I just want to end this podcast on a little slight sad note, but... A friend of mine passed last week um, really suddenly and his name was Will Skinner and I want to dedicate this episode to him because he was a massive pod pig and I just know that he debriefed the, the episodes every week to all of his friends in Tokyo. He's got so many Tokyo listeners out there listening to us right now, should I say. So hello to all you guys and this is for you. Sending you a big hug because he was just an amazing, beautiful person full of energy and it's so tragic. I was so upset yesterday but... Yeah, I just know that he would be thriving his little tits off about this shout out, honestly. Love that. Love you so much, Will. And yeah, just sending my love to everybody that's listening to this in Tokyo or any friends and family back home in Leicester. 
So yeah, let's let's go. Let's fuck off. Let's get out of here. Right, love you guys. See you next week. Bye.